Hello, my name is Ho Zhu Nian. I'm an artist living and working in Singapore where this recording is currently being made. I'm very happy to be able to connect with you in these challenging times. I hope to take this time to share a little bit of my projects and processes with you. I'm an artist who works primarily with moving images, and these images can be created by using a camera or they might be graphics generated by the computer. I also work with found footages, which are images created by other people for other purposes that I recycle and repurpose for many uses. Since 2003, I've made films, installations and performances. And perhaps because of this restlessness, I've been fortunate to have had the chance to work with a wide spectrum of collaborators from various disciplines and different geographies, from film crews to theatre designers to experimental musicians, technicians, programmers, animators to dramaturgs, writers and researchers. One thing which continues to drive my projects is my curiosity about the technical, conceptual and political potential of the different art forms and mediums. I would say that many of my projects begin as an encounter with a historical event, a text or a figure. However, I am always as interested in the story as I am interested in how a story is being told. For which the tiger was majestically adapted with its paws masterfully designed for stealth and its eyes. Since 2012, I've started working on a long term project called the Critical Dictionary of Southeast Asia. The earliest form of the project was a collection of concepts, motifs, and biographies that suggested a different reimagining of the region that I'm from, which is Southeast Asia. These concepts, motifs and biographies are arranged in an alphabetical order as befitting the structure of a dictionary. In 2017, with the help and collaboration of the Berlin-based artists and programmers Sebastian Ludger and Jan Gerber, I created a version of the dictionary that was an ongoing film, made up completely of video footage found from online sources that are continuously recomposed by a set of algorithms that we developed. So this was a film that is constantly changing in real time and different for every viewing. The parameters for the editing or recomposing are in turn based on terms gathered as part of the Critical Dictionary of Southeast Asia. One of these terms, for example, is T for tiger, which revolves around the histories of tigers in Southeast Asia. Since 2013, I've made a few different works about tigers, such as the theatrical performance 10,000 Tigers, as well as the video installation Two or Three Tigers from 2015. For the rest of my session today, I would like to focus on two of my works. One of them will be Two or Three Tigers. The other project, which I will share with you, is called Waiting, made earlier this year in 2020. I hope that at the end of talk, these two projects, made in very different times and under very different circumstances, can somehow resonate. I will begin first with Waiting. Waiting was made this year, in 2020, in collaboration with Ripon Chowdhury, a poet, writer, blogger, and online activist from Chittagong, Bangladesh. Since 2010, Ripon had been based in Singapore as a migrant worker. Singapore has a population of slightly less than 6 million, but it is home to more than 300,000 foreign workers from countries like India and Bangladesh, who mainly work in industries like construction and manufacturing. In April 2020, I received an invitation from a London gallery to contribute to an online project made up of a series of short essays set to video by artists from different parts of the world in response to the outbreak of COVID-19. I accepted the commission with the intention of transferring it to Rupon. Some additional context is necessary here. Just a week or so before I had reached out to Rupon, the Singapore government had, in early April 2020, imposed a partial national lockdown which brought the spread of COVID-19 
amongst the general public largely under control. However, hundreds of new cases amongst the migrant workers' community were being discovered each day. In mid-April, the government then took to releasing two distinct figures in their daily updates on the number of infections in Singapore. One set of these numbers were for cases amongst the local community. The other set of numbers were for infections that took place amongst migrant workers in the dormitories. In other words, Singapore was not presented as one. Singapore no longer counts as one. It is divided, separated from the inside. By August 2020, there were increasing concerns about the state of the workers' mental health due to a combination of their long confinement in the dormitories and their, the great uncertainty that they had over their futures. There were also reports of suicides and attempted suicides. Back in April 2020, when Ripon and I started discussing the project, I told Ripon I was interested in the kind of dreams he had been having. I wondered if he could, for example, commission from him a poem about time. This was how waiting came about. For Ripon, the challenges came in making the video. He was concerned that his confinement in the dormitory greatly limits the range of shots we can obtain. However, we agreed to attempt to transform this limitation into a parameter for the making of the video. Confinement is not only to be the subject of the video, but would also determine its form. The video would be done in long uninterrupted shots within the dormitory. This removes the need for intense post-production as there will be almost no editing choices, no multiple shots to choose from. Instead of planning a sequence of shots to be put together in edit, the filming simply consists of extremely long sequences. These shots did not just capture events, but were events in themselves unfolding in real time. The uninterrupted shot gives us a sense of the space in which Ripon was confined, while its choreography gives us something of Rupon's rhythmic sense. Every shake and tremor that we feel in the image is a record of Rupon's nervous system. For me, this long uninterrupted shot is a concrete slice of time spent in Rupon's presence, waiting. The second work that I would like to share with you is a work from 2017 called One or Several Tigers, which first appeared as two or three tigers in 2015. Both versions of the work consist of two screens that are facing each other. On one screen, we have a tiger, while on the other screen, we have a man. Both tiger and man are created through computer graphics, and both tiger and man are drifting through a void as they sing a duet, which condenses a million or so years of the history of tiger and human relationships in Southeast Asia. The human audience engaging the work is thus caught between the two screens, and depending on which side they choose to face, they will embody the perspective of either the man or the tiger. Tigers were said to have dispersed across Southeast Asia more than a million years ago. When Southeast Asia was still a single land mass, known as the Sunda Shelf. This means that the presence of tigers in Southeast Asia preceded that of the modern humans. In its own way, the animistic cosmologies of early Southeast Asia understood the precedence of tigers. They knew that tigers had came before the humans. This is why they regarded the tiger as a kind of ancestral figure, a medium or container that can transport the spirits of ancestors. And this close relationship between humans and tigers gave rise to the belief that in parts of the Malay world, the tiger lived in villages where the houses have walls of human skin and the roofs are touched with human hair. It has been said that in the midst of crossing lakes and rivers, a tiger can dissolve into human shape. This makes me think of how the French philosopher Bataille once described the being of an animal in the world as that of being like water in water. Water is in Southeast Asia the prime element. It features in almost all its originary myths, 
it is a liminal element, a lubricant for metamorphosis, something which facilitates the changing of states. Should a body of water not be close at hand for the would-be wet tiger's transformation, he can instead perform three somersaults, drawing in the air the sign of the swastika, the symbol of water, the sign of the whirlpool, which opens the path to the underworld. The figures of the tiger and the man from one or several tigers were drawn from an 1865 print titled Road Surveying Interrupted in Singapore by the German artist Heinrich Leutemann. This print represented an actual event that happened in Singapore in 1835 when a road survey was undertaken for the purpose of creating Gambia and pepper plantations to meet with European demands. And this survey was interrupted when a tiger leapt out at them. Miraculously, it was reported that no humans were harmed in this encounter with the tiger. Only the theodolite, the toppling instrument in the center of the image, was reported to have been destroyed to bits. The theodolite was an instrument used for the measuring of the angles of horizontal and vertical planes, a necessary tool for the rationalization of space, an essential tool for the surveyor named George Drongo Coleman, a highly accomplished civil architect and land reclaimer of Irish extraction. In 1833, Coleman was appointed superintendent of public works in Singapore. He became responsible for reclaiming large plots of land from the sea and river marshes to extend the town in Singapore. And he had also designed many notable civic buildings in classic Palladian style, most notably St Andrews, the first church in Singapore. But Coleman was at the same time also the superintendent of convicts in Singapore. In fact, in Singapore's colonial history, the engineers and architects that were in charge of public works often also took charge of the prisons. The prisoners were directly involved in the building of these public works. These prisoners were Indians sentenced to what was known as transportation, which referred to a term in overseas prisons in other parts of the British Empire. For those sentenced, transportation meant a life of indentured labour. These convict workers were employed in all aspects of public works. They drained marshes, built roads, and also worked in the survey departments, where they served as chain men, survey assistants, and land measurers. It was these Indian convict workers that had made up Coleman's entourage in the survey of 1835, the same survey interrupted by the tiger. During the colonial era, the Singaporean penal system had a reputation for being progressive in how the convicts were rendered productive. It was the first jail to introduce a steam-powered sawmill and park mill for manufacturing. There was also a printing press in the prison so that prisoners can be put to work to print as well as to be involved in bookbinding documents for various government departments. J.F.A. McNair, an engineer, manager of public works, and like his predecessor, George Drongo Coleman, a superintendent of convicts in Singapore, published a set of memoirs titled Prisoners, Their Own Borders. In his memoir, McNair describes the philosophy of the Singaporean penal system. Prisoners were to be motivated by a system of rewards and promotion to carry out surveillance on each other. A well-behaved prisoner could be promoted into a water over his fellow prisoners before being finally released into the colony as a citizen. In any case, it was these same prisoners who had worked on the buildings that Coleman designed, including the first church in Singapore. In 1844, when brick prices soared, the colonial administration would even get the prisoners to produce the bricks with which they would then build the civic buildings. In Singapore, in 1860, the prisoners were assigned to the construction of a building that went close to completion began to resemble a prison. It was at that moment that the prisoners realized that they were in fact building their own future jail. With this and in ending, 
and would like to bring us back to the future, to our present. A report in The Guardian in April 2020 quoted a migrant worker who was confined to his dormitory during the lockdown in Singapore. Out of fear of reprisals, the worker has asked to remain anonymous when he said, it feels like we are in prison. It is too difficult. Thank you very much. Mixed prisoners of all castes together. Cynical belief that one caste would invariably betray another. For the prisoners, this constant caste defilement constant perpetual excommunication from their kin. The complete dissolution of life as lived, as lived like water, like water, in water, in water, water. Assembled workers and the prison of workers.